subscribers and hello YouTube viewers. On this occasion, we're off to a town called Avenel. Avenel, a rural township in central northern Victoria, Australia, is 16 kilometres northeast of Seymour and 130 kilometres or 81 miles north of the state capital, Melbourne. It is situated between the railway line to Wodonga and the Hume Freeway with forested hilly country to the south and an attractive undulating country reaching northwards to the Wheatlands. It is in the Shire of Strathbogie local government area. The post office opened on the 2nd of June 1858. It is frequently stated as having been named for a village in Gloucestershire by Henry Kent Hughes. The township arose from there, being a ford whereby Hughes Creek could be crossed by coaches and livestock. In 1859, after the ford had been replaced with a bridge, the government survey marked out the Avenel Township. In the following year, a hotel and a blacksmith were established. Several small farms were sold by the Crown. An early purchaser being John Kelly. His son, Edward, attended the local school and later became known as Ned, the leader of the Kelly Outlaw Gang. The school was uh, Anglican until being transferred to the National Board in 1858. The Avenel Court of Petty Sessions closed on the 25th of March 1969, with the former courthouse subsequently being used by local community groups according to research. Avenel was the hometown of Ned Kelly in his younger years, where he saved a boy from drowning in the local Hughes Creek. His brother and father are buried at the Avenel Cemetery. Kelly and his family went to school in Avenel. Avenel has a school with about 100 plus students, a golf course, an oval, tennis courts, a swimming pool, three churches and two halls. Although at risk of losing population to Seymour, its population has grown since the 1970s. There are three registered historic buildings, the former courthouse of 1876, the coach house near the bridge over Hughes Creek and the bridge itself, built by local sandstone in 1859. The Hume Freeway tourist route helps with patronage for local businesses in the area of accommodation, hospitality and restaurants and cafes, and also for the Plunkett's Winery. The Hume Highway passed through the town until a bypass was opened in December 1981. So, without further delay, um, bear in mind I will uh, have a tendency to ramble on and banter about the place, and unfortunately I am getting a bit lazy with my words, so please enjoy the sights and sounds of Avenel. Okay, so here we are at the railway station. Let's have a look to see what it looks like. A little bit of artwork at the uh, railway station. Very nice. So it is a uh, railway station with two platforms. Here's your platform two. And over on the left here is platform one. Now, if I remember carefully, the uh, older photos of the railway station doesn't appear to have changed all that much. Um, I just can't recall um, the old photos because I'm here now. And I might make it a habit of maybe bringing some of the old photos with me so I can sort of compare them at the same time. But to me, that looks very similar. Now, I'm not too sure if that's coming through clear, but that's inside the actual railway station. So it's no longer in use, the railway station, but the, the station itself does operate. So it's a situation where I think you've got to buy your ticket elsewhere or you buy it inside the, uh, in the train when the uh, conductor comes through to check for tickets. Very good, so they've really preserved it quite well. I'm not sure if I can get an image of this inside. I so said go in there back in the day, buy your ticket, 
and then make your way out on the platform. So here we have your more modern post office, uh, news agency, and slash milk bar, I guess. And then we have this old store. And I'm pretty sure we've got a picture of this that you might have seen earlier, established in 1873. And just over here on the right is the old post office, which we can have a closer look when we get there. Now, I'm not sure if this is coming through well, only because there's a lot of shade and sun coming through the uh, trees. So it's basically, a, um, I guess, a map of the town and some of the more historical bits and pieces you can walk to, which is just terrific. But we'll go up there to check out the uh, old post office. So here she is, the old post office. And it why that sign sort of suggests to me it might be a medical center i'm not sure but definitely next door there is uh, a cafe so you could easily come here for a cup of coffee or tea and i don't know if you can see a little bit further down uh, there is a bus stop a regional bus stop that will take you probably to Nagambi or whatever um, which is just terrific now these boards are throughout the town Gives you a basic description of what this is. Okay, so now we're at the churches. This is St. Mary's Catholic Church. And she looks like she's in great condition. There's your sign. And directly across the road is St. Paul's Church, which is a Anglican Church of Australia. So if you've got one friend going to one church and another one going at the other, you can meet at the end of your masses or whatever they do and go have a cup of tea. And there's the Memorial Hall. Um, and there's another building right next to it. To the right, we'll have a look at that as well. Once again, it's a lovely little town. And like most country towns, these, are, these towns are terrific. And I'd just like to... Um, send out a bit of a cheer to the chap that told me to come out to this location i just met him absolute champion he does have his own uh youtube video as well he does um like uh rc cars and i'm not sure if i should mention what it is or not i'm not sure um if he makes a comment then i'll put it onto the next video but we have a building right here that also looks like a church. So you've got all ch three churches next to each other. And yes, it is. It is the Uniting Church. So once again, like most towns, this must be the highest point of a town because they all try to jockey for the same position um, to get to the highest point. So yeah, so just once again, I did meet the person who um, invited me out to this town. He's an absolute champion. And... Um, I'd just like to thank him for making the suggestion. So there's the church. What I'll do now is I'll make my way back. There is a, an old hotel. I think it was called the Imperial, but I'm not sure. And once again, I think I'm, I'm gonna to have to make a habit of bringing some of the old footage or the old photos with me so I can double check because I'm relying purely on memory and I might be wrong. So we're gonna do the, uh, the hotel, the Imperial Hotel, which I believe it is. And then I'll put the drone up and do this part of the, the, the town. And then we'll do another part near the old bridge and where um, Ned Kelly supposedly saved a young chap in the Hughes Creek. So there's your lawn bowls area. Gentlemen taking care of the, the greens, I guess is what it's called looks lovely and that's another thing that if you're from the city areas there is definitely a different sort of smell 
when you enter in these country areas. Sometimes it's rural as in um, agricultural with <laughs> the smell of cattle and sheep and whatnot. And sometimes I can't pinpoint, I think it's just from the trees. It has a different aroma about it. So we'll just double check, we'll get the sign in for the uh, bowling club. There she is. Very good. Now, what I assumed was the Imperial Hotel might necessarily be, but I, I can't know for sure, but at the moment it's called the Harvest Home. We'll have a look. It looks like it is something that is open, but not um, seven days a week. I think it might be one of those ones where the owners come in, say, Thursday through to Sunday or something similar, or weekends. And then they open up for those hours only. But we'll double check. We'll see what it says. If I can find something to help us uh, understand how this thing operates. Now down in the distance, I don't know if you can see that. It's the uh, the uh, butcher. And over here looks like a, a bakery, but I don't believe it's open anymore. I could be wrong. Um, once again, it could be one of those ones that's opened up on the weekends only for the um, travelling tourists. They come, and here we are back at what I think is the Imperial Hotel. I hope I'm not saying it. It is, and I'm not suggesting that it is 100%. It's just what I'm trying to recall. But she is a beauty. It is an open. I've just checked the doors, and it is closed. Um, what the good thing about this place is, is they do uh, offer functions, accommodation. It's a cafe and a restaurant, so it definitely is open. I've looked inside the windows, and it does look like a functioning thing. It's not something that's just closed. Um, but they're only open on certain hours and I really can't find a sign to say what it is. I guess you've got to go to the website and the website will tell you everything about um, when it's open and when it's closed. So there's the balcony upstairs. Alright, very good. So what I'll do now is we'll get the drone up and we'll have a bit of a sticky beak of the area, including the station because uh, the town is actually quite drawn out. It's not all sort of central to one area. Now, here we are at the CFA station, and in the middle of your screen now, I do like the LED uh, display of humidity, current temperature, wind speed, wind gusts, uh, tells you what the day is, um, that it's Thursday, temperature between 1 and 14. What a great thing to have. So there you go. Now recruiting. I think every CFA are looking for recruits. So if you live in the area or the, distri uh, the district and you definitely would like to join the CFA, this town will definitely appreciate any effort or services you would like to offer. Now here we are at John Red Kelly. And from the uh, Historical Society, this is supposedly where Ned Kelly's father is buried. And as you can see, it's right at the corner of the uh, cemetery area. And it can be seen from the road uh, quite easily. So here we are at the war memorial for the town, for all those who have served. Definitely the First World War, the Second World War, and I do believe it also includes um, the Vietnam War. So here's the Avenel uh, Courthouse. <laughs> Hasn't changed much since the old photos were taken.
next door is an old property as well and you've got the library I guess that's the library next door now but the most important thing for all the kids is behind or next to the library just there to the right is the local swimming pool and I can just imagine in summer this place would be quite warm okay okay so this old building here that's now the library um, there's a little board here and that tells us it used to be the police station very good so there's one of those information boards they're scattered throughout the town which is really really handy um, but I do <laughs> like to speculate and look at something and try to figure it out what it might be I'd say probably 90% of the time I get it wrong but that's okay um, it's all part of the fun of a uh, getting out wandering around getting a bit of exercise and checking out a bit of history so that's the courthouse once again courthouses were always built sturdy uh, from my understanding they were built because not only was it to um, give judgment on charges of people but also where you'd pay your taxes especially during the gold rush period so um, <laughs> you can't get away with paying taxes and the government obviously invested more money into like the post office and the courthouses okay so here we are at the uh, local bridge we've got the old one and the brand new one and this is a plaque to tell you that back in the day it looks like when did this happen um quickly reading it da -da 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 -da. the wooden bridge was built in 1847 after the bridge was completed in 1869 there was a toll gate uh well there's no real mention of the date but supposedly a, a young kid had fallen off the bridge into the Hughes river which is just here or huge creek i should say and ned or edward Kel uh, kelly saved him so we're at that exact location where ned kelly saved uh, a young kid and he was young himself from drowning and if we come over here it gives you an idea what the bridge looks like I'll actually go down there to give you a better shot so there's the the bridge and just on the other side is the new one and I do believe this is the old route from Melbourne to Sydney along the Hume Highway which is now um, no longer in use as the main route to Sydney so we'll go down and have a bit of a sticky beak okay so here we are at the new bridge or underneath it and there is the old bridge and this is Hughes Creek and once again supposedly uh, but it is factual that a young kid had fallen um, was struggling to swim I guess and Edward or Ned Kelly jumped in and rescued him but I can tell you right now I must much prefer the old bridge to the new one it just looks lovely this bridge it's just a lovely lovely bridge whereas we're directly under the new one and this is the old Hume Highway um, that we're on now this gives you a better perspective of the new and the old and I think <laughs> I've made it obvious that I much prefer the bridge on the right it just looks so much um, pleasing to the eye so once again we're near the uh, Hughes Creek and there's another plaque or information board and not wanting to sound too negative but they really are milking <laughs> the, the the Kelly family to the absolute maximum and I know there's a lot of people out there that are quite interested about the, the Ned, Ned Kelly and his family and what they got up to so for those that are interested in that sort of stuff this is just for you Now, unfortunately, like every town, 
you do unfortunately have to stumble into what does very much appear to be an abandoned building. This one in particular um, looks relatively old. I'm just looking at the stonework, but the stonework doesn't suggest to me that it's like the 1920s. It's like, it looks like a little bit more modern stonework than the uh, than what I'm usually seeing for the really old stuff. And yes, unfortunately, every window's been popped out. And <laughs> the graffitis have been in. It is a bit of a shame. Um, I would even suggest that this side of the road that I'm on is subject to flooding. Now, I could be wrong, but there's no other houses around here, and it seems to be more in a bit of a, a valley for that to occur. But once again, it could be wrong. Now, yeah, so this is not as old as what I'm guessing at. This is not like the old bluestone houses or the um, sandstone houses. These look like Besser bricks and rendered. And going by that switch there, that could be quite modern. So we're talking maybe 50s, 60s is what I'm thinking. I could be wrong. And as I've said on numerous occasions, <laughs> I'm often wrong. So there you go. So this is quite interesting. I, I, I find this just as fascinating as some of the other things that I've looked at in this town. The old kitchen. It's a laminix kitchen and those tiles. But then again, a lot of the times kitchens do get renovated. Um, termites have been having their way with this house as well. Just check out the termite damage to that door jam. Wow. That's something special. They ate well here. The termites. But it would have been a great house back in the day. I love the um, the stone sort of fireplaces. So there's at least two fireplaces. I don't know if you can see that. There's one there. I've got sort of nearly both of them in, in the same image. Which is just great. And yeah, everything. Anything that's of value, once again, gets stripped out. Which is sad to see. What you do with this place, I have no idea. Um, the floor itself is very soft, um, which suggests that water is getting in, either from the roof or from flooding. I still believe it's this place is subject to floods, um, and that's why it's probably been abandoned. I do like how you got this pole and the way the uh, the porch light comes on there. Very sort of. I don't know what you call it, retro. Very nice. So still some lovely, you can sort of gauge and gives you an idea what this place looked like back in the day. Now the carpet's a bit of a giveaway, but that really doesn't tell its age because carpet does get replaced. Once again, there is a mattress that looks like it's been brought in, which is a bit of a worry. Um, and look, I am aware and you'd have to be pretty ignorant to, to not be aware that there is a, a bit of an issue with some towns. I'm not saying this town, but some towns do have a, a substance abuse issue and people will seek out these places to do what they really can't do socially or in front of family and friends because of whatever that addiction is, which is often quite sad. But this town, it's a, it's a terrific town. It's absolutely lovely. Very much a sleepy hollow. From what I've seen, it's um, a, a very proud town. Like I saw a lot of, I don't know if you might have seen in the background of the video, there's been a lot of people in the background doing gardening. The shire or the council is um, maintaining the streets um, and the footpaths. And you can see that even most of the historic buildings are really well preserved and it looks like they're trying to um, take advantage 
well, not maybe take advantage, but probably uh, explore how they can um, present the Kelly family that once resided in this area. And you probably have found out that, or I've mentioned earlier in the uh, video that uh, Ned Kelly did attend school here.
just jumping in here, um, that building that's in your view now is, according to locals, uh, or one local anyway, uh, it has been abandoned for quite some time, and he believed that it also used to be the post office for the town, which I thought was quite interesting. Uh, we've been through it together with the, the walkthrough, so your guess is as good as mine. The local was quite adamant that it could have been. Um, and once again, if you do like the video, by all means, click on the uh, like button or that thumbs up icon. Please consider subscribing. Subscribing does not cost you one cent, but it helps out the channel immensely. But most importantly, stay safe, commute safe, and have a great day. Oh,